Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Jerry Views back with another video and today we're talking about iOS 17.3. Now, iOS 17.3 has just been released on this RC version and it will be here very, very soon for the public, but we're going to talk about the exact date in a few minutes here. First of all, let's take a look at everything that every iPhone user must know before they update their device to the new iOS 17.3. Now, first off, of course, will be the update process. Now, this will be different from different people based on which software you have currently installed on your iPhone. If you're like me and you have the iOS 17.3 RC version installed on your device, then you won't be getting an update because you already have the same version that will be released to the public. Now, if you want to continue with the next betas that Apple will release, of course, you can just leave your settings like this. If you don't want to continue with the next betas, once you have iOS 17.3 on your device, you can just go to the beta updates here and make sure you turn them off. Now, if you have beta 3 and not the RC version, you can install the RC version right now. But if you don't want to do that, you just want to move of course, to the public version of iOS 17.3, even though it's basically the same update, what you can do is instead of installing the RC, just turn off the betas right here. And when iOS 17.3 will be released to the public, you will of course get that update on your device. Otherwise, if you're on iOS 17.2 or 17.2.1, you can simply wait for the release and you will get the update right here. Now the size of the update will depend of course for different devices. And of course, for different software that you might have installed on your iPhone. Now, in this case, when I updated to the RC version, it was over six gigs. That's because we're moving from the beta to RC and iOS will be completely reinstalled on the device. Now, if you have iOS 17.2.1 on your device or 17.2, the update will be way, way smaller once you get iOS 17.3 on your device. And then we have the build number. This is the new build number for iOS 17.3. It is 21D50. This is the new build number. Now, another thing you need to know about iOS 17.3, another reason to actually install it on your device is that iOS 17.3 will actually add a modem update to your iPhone. That way you will most likely get way better connectivity on your iPhone with this new software update. And now let's talk about performance. Now performance on iOS 17.3 is great. This is one of the parts where this update actually really shines. You can see the Geekbench score right here. 2,974 for the single core score, while we have 7,494 here on the multi-core score. This is the best result that I ever got on iOS 17 with this device, the iPhone 15 Pro Max. It is amazing in performance, and of course, the scores show it all right here. Next, let's talk about battery. Of course, another really important thing when it comes to software updates. Well, as you can see right here in the last 10 days, I had some like really mixed battery performances with iOS 17.3. Now you can see right here with exactly 100%, I got 15 hours and six minutes on the device here. Right here with about 60%, I got five hours, 40 minutes the other day. And then right here today, actually with this newer, like freshly installed iOS 17.3 RC with about 45% battery, we got four hours, 42 minutes. And then here we have some other days, right here, 75% battery, 10 hours and 56 minutes. Now it's actually okay, it's not the best ever. Some days you actually get really good battery, some days maybe it might be even like a bit worse, but of course it all depends what you're doing during the day, whether you're using Wi-Fi or cellular, or whether you're playing any games or anything like that on your iPhone. But overall, it's a, like a really nice performance when it comes to battery, nothing like extremely great when you compare it to the last beta, you can just expect a similar performance on battery as well as iOS 17.2. And now let's talk about some really important features that this update will add to your device. First of all, the new stolen device protection, which will add another layer of security to your iPhone. Now, here's how this feature works. Basically, this feature will add this layer of security where Face ID and Touch ID will be required for things like applying for a new card, turning off lost mode, erasing all content and settings on your device, and using your iPhone to set up a new device or using the payments methods that are saved on Safari and even turning off stolen device protection. Of course, you will have to do that 
charging your iPhone, changing your iPhone passcodes, and also turning off Find My. All these features now will require Face ID and also the passcode if you have stolen device protection turned on. Now, of course, under Face ID and passcode, you will have the option to turn it off as well if you don't want to use it, but it's a great layer of security that Apple will add to your iPhone with this feature. Now, another great feature that Apple has actually talked about at WWDC 2023 is the ability to airplay on hotels. Now you will be able to actually do that and this support has been added by iOS 17.3. When you go to a hotel, now you will be able to actually airplay from your device, which is really great. A very nice change here on the coverage section as well. So when you go to settings general under the Apple care and warranty settings, now you will see a full list of all the devices that are connected to your Apple ID. So all the devices that you have ever connected to your Apple ID and are still there will be shown right here. And you can see the warranty and the coverage for all of your devices. And it even shows the proper icons right here for each of the device with the color and every detail regarding that device. Collaborative playlists are back with iOS 17.3, a feature Apple has added to iOS 17.2 beta, but then it was removed and it didn't make the final release. Now it's here with iOS 17.3. Not just that, you can also now react with an emoji to the songs that have been added to that playlist. So you will have a few like presets. And then of course, you can even choose anything you want from the emoji keyboard and add it basically as a reaction to that song. Now, other things that iOS 17.3 will bring to your device, big improvements to crash detection for the iPhone 14 and 15 series that has been stated by Apple as well. So you can expect that now to be a new feature and of course an improved feature actually on iOS 17.3. So when can you expect iOS 17.3 to be released? Well, iOS 17.3 will of course be released next week. And the date for the release of iOS 17.3 will be January 23rd. I was really hoping that Apple would do it on the 22nd as usually these bigger updates get released on the Monday, but it looks like Apple is just moving a day ahead and then releasing it on January 23rd. That's the date that you can expect iOS 17.3 to come to your device with these really awesome new features. So now the question, should you update or not? I know since iOS 17.3 beta 2 was actually pulled by Apple that it was causing a lot of devices to actually crash and go like into a boot loop and people losing their stuff. A lot of people will hesitate probably to install this update. Well, if, if you're hesitating or you're afraid to do that, I suggest you wait for a day or two and see the results, whether that will happen again or not probably it won't happen. So it's a great update. As you can see, we have some really important new features, a really nice improvement there on performance as well. And the battery is not that bad. So overall is a great update. So I suggest you update your device as soon as you get iOS 17.3 under the update section. So that's basically it for this video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that like button. Of course, subscribe for more iOS 17.3 videos, and I will see you on the next one.